All right, two boxes this time. They're actually pretty big. And I guess uh, I'm gonna go scissors on this one. I don't have the energy to wrestle with a box. I guess the order of these boxes is wrong. But you'll see what I mean when I open this bigger one. Not that there's anything wrong with opening the one with anime. But this one, ow. Bet y'all were expecting that to happen sooner or later. Dang it, what's up with this? I can't get into it. It's like they came up with some sort of Stupider than me using scissors in the way off that the Boy Scouts taught me. But again, that was a long time ago. Over here. Then we got that there. And. Hmm, I'm gonna turn that over like that. And this is the other content of this box. This is the reason that was in the bigger box. <clears throat> yeah, and like the other ones, I'm going to have to use scissors on this. And this is just a... Well, I kind of decided uh, coffee mugs I have weren't anime enough, and these aren't necessarily... Japanese, per se, this this could be a U.S. artist imitating the art style. I decided to get some coffee mugs, so I've got this one, and I've got this one. It looks like Miku Hatsune, kind of, but I don't know if it's actually supposed to be. I'm not even sure if this is all officially licensed. You can kind of see that one's been used. Uh, Cowboy Bebop. You know, I decided... At least one of them had to be real anime, and Cowboy Bebop's actually really good. Just there, and then the final one. Just a second. The final one's really hot because, uh, you know, it turns black. I bet if I. Uh, maybe you can kind of see that a little bit. I don't know. I'll, uh. Hmm. Maybe I can. Do something fun and just leave it lying on its side here as I go through this video. Uh, and if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take these and move them to the side. I guess before I go through the anime, uh, non-anime, I got Gremlins to the new batch, the Babadook, uh, fifth season of Venture Brothers. It follows. Uh, Minions and Samurai Jack Seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4. <clears throat> let's see, I also got these animals, so I'll get those closer. But let's begin with uh, the manga, Attack on Titan, Volume 17. Uh, this one comes with the special DVD. Let's see, it kind of mentions it down there. The content of this DVD actually happened very early in the manga as a side story, but. Hmm. There we go. But now we get it in its animated form. Gosh, it really does feel like a long time ago. Because I read through all 16 volumes and... What do I have to show for it? Well, increased knowledge of uh, Attack on Titan that y'all won't get for a little while. So we've got Issei's... Ilse's Notebook. Volume 17 Special Edition. And since this is an anime DVD, ow, that's some thick plastic. Fortunately, I've got some common everyday household tools that can help alleviate these kinds of problems. I guess I should figure out what I'm going to be doing with this. Okay, I, I don't know what I was expecting. 
Uh, I wonder if there's anything about here. It'd be interesting if it was dub, but I'm assuming it's sub only. Um, I don't know. I'm not seeing anywhere where it says uh, what language it has. And then, of course, we've got volume 17, which... Uh, <clears throat> hmm. I have to figure out. I guess uh, I'll throw that in the pile. I'll put the manga aside with all the other stuff that... Uh, I wouldn't have in the pile of anime, and continue with the anime. Uh, let's see, I know there's a DVD version of that somewhere in the pile. There we go. Hi, yeah, take the combat butler, Heaven is a Place on Earth, the movie. See, look, the movie. And I can feel that it's light and should only be one disc, and that's kind of what we expect of a movie. Oh, geez. Oh, no, got it. If you can't see, this is already getting darker. As it cools down, um, it should return to its resting color, I guess. So we just got a single disc, as expected. This isn't a particularly expensive release, after all. So, same artwork. And we're going to close this one with the tab on the inside there. Uh, region A only, subtitled only, so about what we'd expect. <clears throat> Ooh, One Piece uh, Season 7 Voyage 4. And, uh, I think, so, I've been putting off watching the One Piece movies because, um, I, especially for shonen anime like this, I prefer to watch the movies when they, on the in between the episodes whose air dates fall around the boundary of the air date of the theater. Under the assumption that if I was watching this on TV, I would have watched those episodes then. You know, I would have watched one episode, and then I would have gone to theaters and watched the movie, and then I would have watched the next episode the next week. So, um, that's my plan with this. Of course, the discard's the same. I guess it's just worth uh, verifying that they're discs from one and two. Uh, next up, we've got Dime Daler, Dime Daler, Dime Daler. Uh, this is Funimation, so that's Region A. Uh, am I reading that right? It's kind of hard to read through the camera. It says English stereo. Okay, that means it's English dubbed. We have we have to check every time for Funimation now because uh, you know they have had a couple series that haven't been English dubbed. It's a little less naughty when it's, uh, hmm, that looks familiar. I'm not sure if I'm entirely familiar with, uh, what it's about, but if I remember right, those are kind of pervy penguin things. I don't recall the exact nature of, um, means that I've seen them in, but, hmm. I'm curious one. Let's see. We verified that was dubbed. Uh, next up comes, a. Check out the coffin persons, which actually has a lot of um, images and whatnot. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, I'll just open these and point that out as I go. This is heavy. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually more than three discs. Could be three discs, though. That is a one, which means this is uh, 12 episodes, three discs. Okay, that's a season one. I don't know if there's more than one season, but what I was noticing over here, let me, oh jeez, this time it's stretchy plastic. What I was noticing from a distance is that, uh, this is English dubbed, and I'm pretty sure somewhere back here it's going to say, uh, Well, it says 12 episodes, so if this is more than one season long, then, uh, going to see, have Sentai used this heavy thing before? Is this Sentai? This is Sentai. 
So the Blu-ray tends to have less discs, and we are curious of the shared artwork. So the first discs are the same, and the second discs are the same. Next up, we got a Space Adventure Cobra on Blu-ray. Uh, I did get the uh, DVD version a long time ago. Hmm. So Discotech released this, and the tab is closed. It's spreading. Hmm. Oh, geez. My hands having a hard time getting into the plastic because this stuff's really soft and gooey. So we're gonna go. Uh, hmm. How do I want to do this then? Maybe on there. As long as the plastic starts coming off, we should be good. Yes. And we're gonna pull this from the back where it's not split in two, like that. Although I apparently missed the chunk. Yeah, there it is. Nothing complicated. Be interesting to uh, grab the DVD version that I bought so long ago and see how it compares, but. Let's see, that's actually not everything. I do have three more things that I bought. These were accidentally the uh, same thing. I double checked to make sure that I didn't, they didn't send me the wrong thing. It, I just happened to stupidly pre-order two of those. So mistakes do occasionally happen. First, oh, I think this one's probably the more noticeable of these two. It's Library War. And the reason this one's more notable is I did import the movie for Library War um, oh so long ago. So. If I prioritize watching this, then I'll get to watch the movie. Although, given how slowly I do that, I, th I think you can agree that uh, I'm probably going to be... Um, the movie's probably going to come out on DVD here in the States before I'm um, done. Mm, very simple. Two discs. And according to this, this is a TV series and special, and I'm sure if we look back here, audio is just Japanese. It's a pretty standard uh, discotheque release. You can see that's uh, getting very dark now. It's still a little warm, but my experimentation before suggested that uh, we would need a, oh, and this is Saint Seiya, the lost canvas. In order to get that to image to show clearly, I couldn't use the hot water from the sink, even though that can get scalding hot. Like, I don't know, maybe my hot water was not as hot that day as it normally is. But, I forgot. Hmm. It's going to be possessed. It's going to go to the no slip zone. Content-wise, we got this one, two, disc three, and disc four. This is the complete OVA series, which is actually, I think, a good amount of stuff. 600 minutes, so it's a good amount of content. Huh. And I guess, uh... This hasn't finished completely cooling down yet, but as you can see, it gets completely black when it's uh, completely done, but we need to move on to other things, so uh, that's uh, this week's anime DVD collection update. So I thought I would uh, demonstrate the cup by uh, a little more just by pouring some uh, boiling water from my electric kettle in here and letting y'all see the reverse direction of the color change. It's a bit quicker, as you can see. It's already um, there, and it's a little more full than I would normally have it, so that it 
was stopping. You can kind of see on the side there where the black is rising up, changing colors. It's not spectacular, but it is a fun little gimmick. So, uh, I started up Akuma no Riddle, a uh, riddle story of devil. Uh, I think it's both. And I actually am not quite sure why it's rated as lowly as it is. Now, there's a possibility that, you know, my perception of it is a little different based off of the couple anime I came off of. I mean, we had um, Eat the Kiss, which um, actually had a very interesting overall structure goal and whatnot, but I was really frustrated with the characters. And then I had um, Dramatic Murder, which kind of didn't draw me in, really. And I think for most people that was. And this one was kind of different because... You know, you can kind of tell the difference between, like, Dramatical Murder and this and that. And this one, you're kind of given the very straightforward, this is what this anime is about in the first episode. So, you kind of know what to expect, uh, what the characters are supposed to do, why you're watching this, you know, etc. And, you know, I wouldn't say it was great, but I'm... I guess I'm surprised that it's under a 7 on my anime list at that. So, I don't know. I mean, it's a... About people who are supposed to assassinate her, and that's uh, you know pretty much it. That's straightforward. It's simple, and everybody else are assassins, and you're like, okay, what are their various assassin skills, and what are their histories, and what are their personalities? And there's plenty of stereotypes, and a lot of it isn't necessarily spectacular. I mean, you kind of watch it, and you wonder why nobody uh, pulled out a sniper rifle and just shot her from a distance or something like that. But you know, outside of that, I thought it was okay. I'm, I'm not quite sure why it's in the meh category. I don't know. Maybe y'all have different opinions. Now, this also included the OVA, and that, that one's a very interesting one, because <clears throat> it's kind of swimsuit es episode-esque, except it already had a swimsuit episode, but at the same time, I thought it was a somewhat amusing little side episode. The sort of thing where if it had been an episode in the middle of the series for various reasons it wouldn't have worked but beyond that I thought it would have worked. I don't know. So my time was filled up doing other stuff so other than that the only other thing I watched was uh, let's see Invaders of the Roku Joma I think. I watched the first episode of this and I'm trying to remember if I've looked up the score for this one, if this one was also kind of really low, but I thought the first episode was amusing. It's, um, I can, I can kind of see this one turning people off, but the first episode was just kind of absurd. But the main character has been likable so far, and the anime doesn't seem hell-bent on torturing people, it's just... Very strange. But at the same time, you know, even if people really like the first episode, I could also see they may have burnt things out a little fast. It's like, it's a harem anime, and if you compare it to something like Infinite Stratos, they at least try to build up the characters that enter the main character's harem. And this one is completely stark opposite, where you know, you've got little things that are hints of things here and there, and then all of a sudden everything happens all at once, and it's this glorious bundle of confusion and silliness, and it, it's, it's absurd. And I really like that about it, but, you know, again, when you have some infinite stratos building up the characters, you kind of start building up the interactions of the characters as you go, and this one may be too much at once. I will, I'll have to find out by actually watching beyond the first episode. But it was um, a fun start, so I'm interested to see where it goes. So beyond that, I did watch uh, a couple of um, non-anime things. That's probably why I didn't get as much anime watching done, but oh well. Um, I did watch The Babadook. I, wa I went into it uh, with a concept of... Um, what overall, ex what what explained a lot of what was overall going on. It's not like a 100% explanation, but it's like the interpretation that once you watch the movie, you have to kind of watch the movie 
thinking about if you rewatch it. And so maybe watching it the first time, um, you know, I kind of got it because it seemed like it had it would have some nice uh, creepiness to it. But for some reason, it didn't quite. Um, it, it it didn't quite um, hit that nerve, and I think it's because I spent too much time thinking while watching it about that understanding of the movie and the execution that was going on in front of me at that moment. So, I might have uh, cheated myself out of a um, movie with some nice, interesting imagery and happenings and confusions and whatnot. But it follows managed to creep, be creepy, and I think it's kind of related to the concept of the uncanny valley. So it's a, a, about a curse, and I don't want to go into too much details and describe too much and give too much away. But um, <clears throat> the way you kind of perceive the curse is creepy, and it feels very uncanny valley. Now that I think about it, I think it's because. You know, unca the unca the concept of the uncanny valley is that if they m if something becomes more and more human looking, you know, uh, you can begin with a simple rock. You make it more and more human looking, and we kind of feel more sympathy to it, and then uh, it gets a little too realistic, and we get really creep out until it gets super realistic, perfect, and. You know, that could mean that, like, maybe you look at a CGI creature and the eyes don't work right, or the um, skin feels weird, the, something alarming about the movement or whatever, you know. So, the idea with the CGI there is, um, or with that kind of problem, is that it's probably triggering something that, that our bodies use to detect uh, illness, possible illness in another person. We're like, you know... We don't want to interact with that person. We uh, don't want to get whatever they're getting. Now, <clears throat> that's a very round of, that's a long explanation that since most of y'all probably already have heard of the concept. And in this movie, it's kind of a strange application of it because, well, I'm trying, I guess I can't think how to describe it without giving away more than I would refer to. So instead, um, let's just say I kind of agree with uh, some problems people have expressed with the movie, and that's uh, the nature of the curse doesn't seem consistent enough to keep it in that uncanny valley. You kind of feel like something else is going on, so you kind of get pulled a little out of the valley. It's still really creepy. But you can feel that something about it could have been done slightly better, possibly. Now, I can understand why it would be hard to do that, because um, the nature of the movie was such that um, a lot of elements of it are intentionally not supposed to feel consistent together, because it was inspired by a nightmare that the director or the writer had a couple of nights in a row, and so basically he wanted to replicate some of those feelings, I think. But, you know, still, it, I, I guess I enjoyed it a little bit more than the Babadook, because with the Babadook, if, um, if, you, if you're not feeling it, then you may end up just sympathizing with the ladies, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't talk too much about that. Uh, and then, of course, I watched the first season of Samurai Jack. I knew I would only keep it through the first season. Well, I was planning to keep it through the first season. There was always the possibility that it would be so outrageously spectacular that I would keep going. But the truth of the matter is, it's right about where I thought it was, or where I thought it would be. I mean, clearly this was born from the age of... Um, Dexter's Lab, Powerpuff Girls, etc. But you kind of feel that those are kind of playing games that are ultimately ultimately supposed to be about that about this. Sort of like how you know kids like to play tag or hide and seek or whatnot, and you know those kind of games may actually be preparing them for skills they would have been using in real life if they were needing to say capture a running rabbit or um, hide from a hunting carnivore in the area or something like that. 
And so you can kind of think of the games being great, and they lead to something that's maybe interesting or important. And this story is definitely very not like those other things. It, you can kind of feel that it's like the culmination of all the practice that happened there in storytelling and animation and action and design and, you know, just everything. So, for the content itself, I thought it was pretty good. I definitely want to watch more seasons, but I'm okay with putting them off for now. And I guess the main thing I have about it is the art style kind of makes things feel compressed, which is the opposite of anime. You know, anime makes characters feel tall or long or whatever, and some of them really make them tall and skinny and maybe like a, an anime of that's a world populated by Slenderman or something like that. But it's a, di it's a very different perspective, and I, I guess it's aesthetically uh, just a little bit off-putting, but doesn't make it unwatchable. It's a, and this is a very personal um, feeling while watching it, so it, this would probably change from person to person. Um, and I went into it pretty much thinking a lot about Avatar The Last Airbender, not because I think it would be necessarily comparable with that, but just because I guess Mako voiced uh, two characters from the two series. And I guess there's some Asian-y inspirations in them, but... Avatar, I kind of expected to be where it is. Because I know there's four seasons of Samurai Jack. And I know it did not leave off in a way such that there wouldn't be um, more. Couldn't be more. And that's why I think they're starting to make more now. But it kind of tells you that fundamentally this is a series about a samurai named Jack who is trying to beat a, a coup and he's trying different things and he's throwing a coup here or trying to find a solution to the problem there or occasional side episodes there and if you can contrast that with Avatar The Last Airbender within the first couple of episodes they give you the general understanding of the world you know both animes do that um, but Avatar The Last Airbender then shows you g the general direction of um, how they're going to push the boundary. You know, they're, they're not going to kill people, but they can most definitely say, yeah, by the way, you know, people probably died. And then probably the most important distinction, I, I mean, I guess if I talk about the die thing, I mean, in Samurai Jack, it's like a lot of things he chops up are robots. Yeah, uh, that's fine. It's a... Uh, need action. But the major difference in my opinion is that shortly after that Avatar The Last Airbender establishes that it has a set timeline within its universe. And I get the impression that Samurai Jack can cannot do that. Which basically means that you watch three seasons of Avatar The Last Airbender and it feels like a long but comprehensive story arc. Which is probably also why Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is so great. But uh, Samurai Jack doesn't quite have that. But it's interesting to watch episode to episode. You probably mix them up again a bit if you don't have to deal with the uh, two-parters, three-parters, whatever. There may be a couple of those in there. The three-parter at the beginning. I think I saw at least one two-parter later. But um, it's interesting. It's interesting to think about because... Uh, this has been on my to watch this for a long time, and it's, uh, again, a kind of culmination of all of the animation efforts that went into shows just before to uh, pretty much create this. I guess, uh, outside of that, um, there's nothing else to really talk about, is there? Um, today would be the day, or tonight would be the night I would pre-order next month's anime, and I think there's a couple more th things coming out this month, but they're slim picking, so I kind of have to decide before next week what I'm going to be doing for next week, and for the week after, I'm definitely going to do an apartment tour. So, I, I guess I should make some decisions there. 
Um, and obviously, y'all aren't going to know what those decisions are until next week. Or you ask in the comments and I answer because I um, sometimes just answer. Um, well, I don't know. I'm babbling at this point, so y'all have a nice week.